It's probably a year ago when I saw that video. It was called My Deconversion from Christianity. And before I could fully process what that even meant, it started autoplay. I grew up in a Christian home, in the Christian subculture. And I want you to know, when I left home, I realized everything I thought I knew about Jesus was a lie. Creation, sin, hell, salvation, it's all a myth. That video shook me. And I didn't even watch all of it. I was worried I'd be affected by it. And if I followed, I'd lose my faith. So I was like, whoa, nope. Close video. All my life, I've had questions about my faith. About God, and about religion. Now, I'm gonna tell you my questions. My struggles, my doubts. I hope you can handle the truth. I shouldn't have been afraid to look at that video. But what really shook me, and by shook, I mean, just made me very doubtful. I was thinking if, if God isn't real, if Jesus isn't real, if my faith isn't real, then this life is all there is. And after that, there's nothing. How dark, hopeless, pointless this all would be. We can't just be an accident. The chances are insane. I've heard to not question the Lord. When I ask why, is that offensive? Am I a bad Christian? I'm just looking for compelling evidence. Like, there's a theory that Moses was on DMT that came from the acacia tree when he saw the burning bush. Was he lit? Was he high? Could the Bible stories have been influenced by hallucinogens? When I saw that video, it, it was sad. I mean, just hearing the title, My Deconversion, I guess it, it made me afraid to explore my doubts, because if I did... Somewhere along the line, the word doubt started to take on the baggage of unbelief. But they're not the same thing. To doubt something means that you might have some questions. Maybe you believe part of it, and maybe you have some questions about part of it. Unbelief is a state where you've decided that you don't think something is true at all. Many people believe that in 1969, the United States successfully sent a small team of humans to the moon. They didn't go to the moon themselves, but they have good reasons to believe that this event happened. There are others, however, who do doubt whether it happened. Perhaps they heard interesting counter data, plausible stories. The question has been raised in their minds. They're not saying that they definitely don't think that Neil Armstrong stepped foot on the moon. They just have some doubts. Maybe it really did happen they just like to know more. Whereas a third group, they flat out do not believe that the moon landing was anything other than a, a, a production set in a Hollywood studio. They experience unbelief. Doubt. Is it harmful to faith? Can I have doubts about my faith, or is that a bad thing? I think it's more harmful to blindly believe what you were told without discovering it yourself. Because it's not real faith to believe in something just because someone said it and say, OK. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much information out there and so many different opinions 
And I think it would be weird if we didn't have any doubts. Yeah, I, I think having doubt is normal. And I think the idea of sharing something, even though it isn't, is, can be very harmful. It's actually good. Yeah, I just think that you have to open your mind up and just be able to see and understand other people's views. And that's a pretty big part, because if you don't allow yourself to see what other people believe, then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Just by not allowing yourself to doubt. That's deep. <laughs> you asked for it. Doubt is almost like a path that forks in different directions. As you explore your doubts, you can end up in a place of no longer believing. But believe it or not, that can be good. Not everything you hear at church or from Christian people comes from the Bible. And doubt can be a path to jettisoning things that people added on to the Word of God while retaining what is good and true in Christ. Jesus spent a good amount of time trying to show the religious leaders of the time that they had added a bunch of extra things to what God had said, weighing people down. The path of doubt can also lead, eventually, to belief, and more secure belief at that. Or in the meantime, it can lead to holding ground that we might label trusting uncertainty. It starts with a spark of faith, and that spark can be big or small. Maybe we trust that this world had to come from someone, but we want to really know more of what he's like. Or maybe we believe that Jesus died for our sins, but we're unsure about how we feel about the Bible. I like talking with my friends, exploring our doubts together. It's part of taking ownership of our own beliefs. Last night, I kept wondering, do some people live by faith and others by fact? I mean, I mean or, or maybe it's like there's a gap between what we can possibly know and what we can't. And what we do in that gap is real faith. <sighs> Sometimes, I don't know what to do with the answers I come up with. My granddad once told me, doubt is like a tunnel. When you enter a tunnel, at the beginning, you can still see the light behind you. But at some point in the middle, it's just darkness. You can't see the light where you came from. And you can't yet see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is the scariest part of doubt. And when we're scared, sometimes what we want to do most is to stop, to sit down and stay still. It seems safer somehow. But when you're in this place, in the, in the darkness of doubt, that's when you need to keep going. To walk all the way through your doubt to the light at the end of the tunnel. Here's what I've learned. When I doubt, it can reveal my complacency and the ideas I supposedly believe in. But doubt itself becomes my fuel for digging deeper and becoming stronger. <laughs>